Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and in this short video, I'd like to discuss with you some secret sources of vitamin A in your diet. Uh, if you Google, hey Siri, what are some good sources of vitamin A in my diet? You'll get answers like sweet potato, spinach, pumpkin, carrots, peppers, mangoes, beans, peas, uh, pumpkin, and then even some authorities will tell you that fortified breakfast cereal are excellent sources of vitamin A. And there's a problem with this. None of that's true. None of those things have any real vitamin A in them at all. That's what this video is about. And at the end, I'm going to tell you where you can actually find real absorbable, usable vitamin A that your body so desperately needs. If you know someone who's confused about diet, please consider sharing this video with them. It might help them understand the difference between what people call vitamin A that's in plants and what actually is real vitamin A and where to find it. The plants I mentioned earlier contain beta carotene and alpha carotene and beta cryptoxanthine. These things are called vitamin A-like substances, but they're absolutely not vitamin A. You have to be able to absorb these things, first of all, and then after you've absorbed them, you have to be able to convert them from the carotenoid that they are into real retinol vitamin A, which is the usable form in your body. Now, different uh, authorities talk about how much people can actually absorb and how much people can actually convert. And these numbers range very widely, uh, anywhere from 3.6% up to maybe 28%. So there are many people listening to this who are poor absorbers of the carotenoids, beta carotene, alpha carotene, and beta cryptoxanthine. Uh, you just don't absorb it. And then there are other people who may be good absorbers, but they can't convert it into usable vitamin A that the human body actually can use. So without doing lots of expensive testing, you don't know if you're a poor absorber or a poor converter or possibly both. And I think this is why some people seemingly do pretty well on a vegan diet because they're good absorbers and pretty good converters. And if they eat pounds of squash and pumpkin and, and spinach and kale a day, they can get enough vitamin A out of that, but many people just are, are terrible converters and terrible absorbers, and they can never get the amount of real usable vitamin A that they need out of a diet like that. Now back to fortified cereals, they actually contain a synthetic version of vitamin A, much like most of the multivitamins have a synthetic vitamin A. And you can absolutely take too much of that. There's been documented cases where people overdose on synthetic supplementary vitamin A like that. And it actually is uh, somewhat linked to an increased cancer rate. So I would avoid any synthetic vitamin A that's in a fortified cereal or in a multivitamin, those those are not real vitamin A and, and they probably are gonna lead to problems down the road. The truth is, is that there is no plant-based source of vitamin A on planet Earth, none, zero. Not in the oceans, not on the land. No plant is going to provide you with real retinol vitamin A. Now there are some bacteria that live in water, salt water typically, called cyano bacteria. And uh, some people call these blue-green blue algae, but they're not a plant. They are a bacteria, cyanobacteria. Uh, and so if you want to eat a plant-based diet, I think that's, that's, that's fine, but you've got to take a cyanobacteria supplement that comes from algae that's been collected and processed from the ocean, uh, you might be able to get enough vitamin A from that. But if you just eat plants and no animals, you're never going to get the amount of vitamin A that your body needs for optimal function if you're a poor absorber and or a poor converter of the carotenoids into retinol vitamin A. So where do you find real vitamin A that's easy to absorb and that is immediately useful for all the functions in your body that vitamin A help you with? Uh, I'm gonna give you a list of the five best sources 
and hopefully you're gonna love at least two or three of these. I want you to tell me in the comments, which ones do you love and which ones do you just hate and can't, can't stomach the thoughts of, much less a mouthful of, of this list. All right, here we go. This is where vitamin A is hiding. These are the secret sources of vitamin A in your diet that you don't often hear about when you do an internet search. First and foremost, without a doubt, is liver. The liver of any animal, whether it is a codfish or a chicken or a cow or a pig or a sheep, goat, it doesn't matter. Uh, I actually love the liver from venison and from wild turkey. They're excellent sources of vitamin A and hundreds of other vitamins and minerals that you actually need. Uh, you'll hear the myth out there that, oh, better not eat too much liver. You might overdose on vitamin A. And this is a myth that's been out there for decades, but there's just no truth behind it. There has been rumors uh, for over a hundred years of people eating too much polar bear liver and having a toxic level of vitamin A. There's one case report of a gentleman who ate 28 ounces of ocean perch liver. Now, I'm not ever going to eat 28 ounces of any liver, but he did that and he got vitamin A toxic. Uh, there's uh, several case reports that want to want to pretend like people overdosed on beef liver, but when you actually read the study, uh, they were also taking a vitamin A supplement, which is synthetic vitamin A, so we're back to that. So the truth of the matter is, is there has never been a single reported case study of someone getting vitamin A overdose from eating chicken liver, beef liver, pork liver, sheep's liver, goat liver, deer, turkey, none. There's no case report of that ever happening. And this includes pregnant women as well. Now there are case reports of pregnant women taking too much vitamin A supplement and becoming uh, toxic. And that's a problem because too much of the synthetic vitamin A can lead to increased risk of cancer, but also increased risk of birth defects. But a, a pregnant woman and a breastfeeding woman absolutely needs real vitamin A in her diet in order for her baby's neural tube development to proceed optimally. Okay, and so do not listen to your doctor if they say avoid liver while you're pregnant. That is idiotic advice. You need to be eating some chicken liver or beef liver, a serving every day of your pregnancy or some of the other four foods I'm about to tell you about. Do not be afraid of liver and overdosing on vitamin A. That's a silly myth. That's just not true. Number two is egg yolks. And this can be chicken eggs, duck eggs, goose eggs. It doesn't matter. The yolk is where all the vitamin A and indeed all the other fat soluble vitamins are going to be located. If you eat, so back to liver, if you eat liver two or three times a week, and it can be any liver, you're going to get all the vitamin A that you need. And if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, all the vitamin A your baby needs as, as well. Liver is a, a superfood multivitamin. Now back to eggs. Uh, if you eat two or three egg yolks a day, most days of the week, you're going to get all the vitamin E, uh, vitamin A that you need and all the other fat soluble vitamins as well, plus hundreds of others of vitamins and minerals. Uh, number three, pastured butter or ghee. Some people call this grass fed butter or ghee. It's actually a really rich source. And so if you put some butter in your coffee each day, like I do, or you put some butter on your steak or you put some butter on your eggs, that is an excellent source of vitamin A. There's never been a case report of overdosing on butter and getting too much vitamin A. You're just gonna get lots of good, tasty nutrition from eating your butter every day. Number four is fatty fish, like mackerel, like sardines, like anchovies, uh, like salmon, like cod, and you've heard of cod liver oil, and it's absolutely an excellent source of all of the vitamin A, vitamin D, and other fat-soluble vitamins, and many other things. But if you don't like it, don't sweat it. There's, you don't need to, to drink cod liver oil. You can just eat cod liver, which is a very mild liver that I eat very often. But any fatty fish is an excellent source of vitamin A and you're never gonna overdose on the vitamin A in fatty fish. Number five is for those of you who are like, yeah, I don't know about any of that stuff. Try some liver worst. Try some liver sausage. Try some liver cheese. These are uh, processed, none, no doubt, but they still are excellent sources of vitamin A. 
and you might find that you really love the taste of these. Uh, many people who have reached out to me online and said, I hate all liver, but I, I, I bought a half pound of the liverwurst and I actually love it. It's, it's very similar to bologna and a lot of people just love it once they try it, but those are also excellent sources of vitamin A that you can eat several times a week and get all the vitamin A that you need. We all need a good source of vitamin A, but people who are particularly at risk of having low levels of vitamin A and the complications that come from that are uh, fetuses in the womb, or young children who are breastfeeding or even at older age, diabetics, anybody eating a low fat diet, because remember vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. And so if you're not eating any fat, that's gonna destroy your ability to absorb any vitamin A that might be in your diet. Uh, people without a gallbladder need to really pay attention and try to eat one of these vitamin A rich sources of food each day. Vegans and then also alcoholics, uh, vitamin A is one of the many vitamins that it becomes more difficult to absorb if you drink too much alcohol. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to get a notification next time I post a video, then click that little subscribe button right down there and the little bell button right beside it so you get a notification next time I have a bright idea. Also, join my wife, Nisha, and I on our Facebook Live. We do one every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard. You can hang out with us and ask your questions and see what's going on in the low-carb keto carnivore world. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.